Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. I started this week's project just by doing a few experiments and I thought I would just film it at the same time and leave this in so you can see. And while I'm doing this, I will just explain a bit about this week's challenge. So our prompt this month in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group is watercolours, but Nina and I have said that, you know, you don't need to use kind of traditional watercolours, you could use any soluble products or even acrylic paints that you water down a bit. So if you don't have watercolour paints, don't be concerned about that because just use the supplies that you have to try and get kind of that watercolour effect. And the challenge we've set for this week is really to kind of experiment with everyday things that you have in, in the house to try and create texture. So what I'm doing here by way of my experiments is I've just cut some little bits of watercolour paper and I'm going to use three different things. Cling film, which you might know as saran wrap or plastic wrap, ordinary table salt, cooking salt, and also acetone. Now, if you didn't have something like acetone, you could try, trying to remember the name of it in the US, I think you call it rubbing alcohol. I don't think the two are exactly the same, but kind of similar. I think you would get similar effects. So there, I've just tried those three household items on watercolour. I'm going to cut three more pieces of card and this time I'm going to use some acrylic inks. Now for the watercolours I just used a red, sort of pink and a blue and here I'm using the uh, Liquitex acrylic inks in muted green and muted turquoise and I'm just going to put a little bit of each onto the card and again what I'll do here is to use the cling film, the table salt and also the acetone. As I say, all I'm trying to do here are little experiments because I want to see how they turned out. I was going to do all of this before I sat down to do the actual project and I just thought, well, why not film this bit as well because we'll just see how this turns out. When the acetone goes on, it really starts to spread it out. I, I like the effect of that on the ink. It uh, gave a kind of granulated effect I thought was really nice. Just spreading it out here a little bit. Of course, I am spreading the salt, which perhaps wasn't such a good idea, but putting a little bit more on there. And just going to put them off to the side to dry. I really like how, how that looked. Now, what I will say at this stage is... Longer term, I don't know how pieces of art with salt or acetone on them, I don't know that they would stand the test of time. So all I'm saying is be slightly aware of that. Now what I'm using is primary elements, two colours, Caribbean mist and autumn leaf. It's the only two colours that I've got. And this is a kind of powder. I think think it will be something like brushos. I don't have brushos, but in my mind, it's a similar kind of product. So I wet the paper. I've put those on. I'm just spreading them about a little bit. I think in a second, I do add a little bit more water just to kind of spread it. Yeah, I do. It's really just to dissolve the powder. Now, I didn't actually add the autumn leaf at this stage, I just used the Caribbean mist. So again, using my three products on these. And definitely quite an unusual effect with the acetone here. And I'll say a little bit more about that when I come on to do my actual projects. Oh, so decided to leave those a little while, have some coffee. And then I came back to them just to start to have a look, little look at them. So that's the watercolour. The acetone gives a definite effect. Knocking the salt off the watercolour. 
and again quite a nice effect there. It wasn't entirely dry so I did start to smudge it a little bit. Really with any of these things you need to let them dry fully. I've used cling film lots of times in the past and you get a really nice effect with that. Now I did notice that the powder had almost, I don't know, reconstituted or it, it, it just seemed to be strange with the acetone, but still a nice effect. The one thing I would say about using the salt is let it dry naturally, because if you use a heat tool, as I've found in the past, it ends up kind of cooking the salt into the background paper. So let it dry fully. So the salt on there, not quite dry on that either, just dabbing it a little bit. I was impatient to, to get on with the actual projects. Now, if you're not in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group and would like to join us, uh, it is a prompt related group, you know, and you're welcome to do any of the prompts from this year or previous years. Just make sure that you always say which prompt it is. And I have left a link to the group in the description box below. Now I've decided that I am going to make some artist trading coins, so two and a half inches. Uh, but you could do any project this week. It doesn't have to be artist trading coins or uh, ATCs, anything like that. Any project at all. And of course, you are welcome to use any other items that you have around the house to try and create texture. So here I am, I've cut out three coins using my, I think it's EK Tools two and a half inch punch. And I'm basically going to do the same thing as I did with the trials. Uh, this time using a blue, kind of red again, and a sort of pinky colour. But you could do this in any colours at all. I've gone for that deeper red this time. And I'm just going to let those blend in. You'll see the blue and red making almost a kind of purple colour there. I'm just going to let these blend in the way that watercolours do. Oh yeah, I decided with this one to use a dark green. And, you know, I had a lot of fun sitting experimenting. There was lots of other things I could have used as well, but uh, there's a limit to how much I can try and cram into to one video. So using the same three products, salt on the middle one, cling film to the left, and then using some acetone. And what I'll do now is put them off to the side to leave them to dry. I've got this plastic lid from something. I'm just putting some kitchen towel down just so it takes in the excess paint. My next three, I'm going to use my acrylic inks, but I'm also going to add in this uh, Windsor & Newton drawing ink, which is in crimson. So again, just a bit of each ink onto the cards. I have to say, I really love the Liquitex colours of these, the muted green and muted turquoise. Windsor and Newton don't come with the little stoppers, so just using a little pipette there and I don't mind that the colours are going to mix in together. So I want to spread the colours out a bit so all I'm going to do is to take a brush to them and just spread them out. I want really these little cards completely covered. And of course, the varying amounts of the different inks will give me a slightly different colour at the end of the day. 
This end one, for example, is mainly purple. But you can see the individual colours coming through here and there. And again, I'm going to use my salt, I'm going to use my cling film, and I'm going to use the acetone. You could use rock salt, sea salt for this. I just decided to use normal table salt. And again, liking the way that the acetone reacts with those. And again, put them off to the side to dry. Now, I'm not going to waste all of that ink that's lying there. I have some offcuts of watercolour paper just lying to the side. So I'm just going to pick all of that up on those cards. And those can be used for future projects. So for the next three, I'm using the colour art primary elements. So this is the Caribbean mist and the autumn leaf. And I really like these primary elements. Uh, they, some of them, the autumn leaf in particular, breaks down into a number of different colours. So I started by just putting some water onto my cards, then just using this little palette knife lifting some of it out and then starting to put it down onto the card. Trying not to put too much on, I obviously don't want to waste product, but by the same token, I want to get sufficient that it will cover the card. Now again, it's still quite powdery in places. So I'm just going to water it a bit more and then just using that palette knife just to spread it out a bit. Putting on the cling film. This one will be the salt. And of course, finally on this one, the acetone. Now, there was those two darker spots in the middle. I decided not at this point to spread them out because I wanted to see how, if I put acetone directly on top of one of those, just what it did. So it did dissolve it a bit further, but there was that intensity towards the middle of it. I decided to try one other thing here and that was to use some fluid acrylics. So I think I use dioxazine purple and quinacridone violet on these two. I did also have out, I think it was a quinacridone gold, but I don't use it at this point or maybe I do. I did. I didn't think that I did. Okay, so I've used the three of those. Now, I did put too much product on there. The tiniest amount of this does. And you can see that by adding the water, it spread it out a bit more. I'm going to use my palette knife just to do a little bit of kind of blending in. But I leave it quite thick because, again, I'm quite keen to see how it reacts like this with the various household items. So just using the palette knife to kind of spread out those little blobs, but it is still very thick on there. So there's some areas that are thinner and some where the paint is really quite thick. So my plastic wrap, my salt, and then my acetone. Now, I was quite interested to see that they barely reacted at all to the acetone, but that's fine. So here they all are, ready to sit for a while and dry off. 
Just going back to my little experiments. That was the powders and there's definitely powder still coming off them. And especially the one with the acetone. Loved the way that the inks played with the plastic wrap. So put them off to the side and I'd left these to dry for a while. So all I did to take the salt off was to take a slightly firmer brush and just to, to brush it off. On the inks, I think the cling film worked really well. Each, each effect was really very nice. Definitely still powdery on the primary elements though. So took a paintbrush there to see if it would spread out. It does, but it still just sits on the surface. The fluid inks, I think, sorry, the fluid acrylics gives a nice effect rubbing the salt there but you can see that that's actually lifting the paper so I didn't scrub too hard there. Now I decided that I needed to seal the ones with the primary elements powders so I've just taken my small gel plate I'm putting some matte medium onto there I'll roller it out and then I'm just going to try to seal in the powders on these ones. And I actually do this twice with each card. So I let it dry in between the layers and then I put a second coat on. So what I've decided to do with these, because they're quite light in colour, I decided to use some of my Twinkling H2Os and I think it's in Mystique and Desert Clay. I just wanted to lift the colour on these. Now obviously because they're watercolour I can't go too wet or scrub too hard because what will happen is the paint underneath will activate. But I just felt that for the project I was doing I just wanted these to be a little bit brighter. So once I put that on I dab off the kind of excess and you can still see the textured pattern underneath. So just dabbing it on gently there. Now, someone asked me, I've not managed to answer all comments from last week yet. Somebody asked me about watercolour paper pilling and whether that was just because it wasn't an expensive paper that, that they had. It can be to do with the quality of the paper, but also with watercolour paper, if you overwork it, it will also pill. So if you get it too wet, even the most expensive ones can pill at times. Just showing you there that with the matte medium, I actually got a nice bit of a kind of dendritic effect. So now I've got the three with the inks. And again, I'm thinking, I just want to do a little bit more to these. And all I'm going to do now is to add some of the, I think it was a muted turquoise to the top of it. So where the salt had left almost white marks, this just helps colour that in a little bit. Didn't need to do this, I just wanted to play, play about, just experiment a bit more. There I'm now adding in a bit of the, I think it's a muted green, or that's the turquoise, I used the green to begin with. And it, this just adds a bit more depth to it. Because by this point, well, I guess when I started, I was thinking I wanted to do kind of some sort of space cosmic related artist trading coins. So really just adding a bit of colour to them all just to, to darken them up a little bit. With the watercolour ones, I could have simply added another layer of watercolour. So even these little lighter ones, just going to add some, some colour to those. So you might think, well, what, what do you do with these? Well, obviously, they're artist trading coins, so you could swap them with other people. You could give them in happy mail. You could add them to journals. If you, if you or 
a friend or a family member are interested in space, then I think these could make, be made into a nice mobile that could hang from the ceiling. I'm now taking, I was going to take that quinacridone gold, but I actually swap it out for the golden fluid nickel azo gold, just to add a little bit of a different colour to that. And again, just trying to hide some of the white spots, especially on the one with the salt. Yeah, so you, you could make a mobile or something like that and just hang these. What I will probably do is, I, d I couldn't do it because I was waiting for them to fully dry and I will back them either just with white card or I might make another set of these and back them with something similar. So I'm now just using Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White and this is really an opaque white. Just wanted to give some the feeling of stars in the background because I very much saw these these two sets as kind of being like the cosmos and the others being like planets. So I had a lot of fun doing these. As I say, you're free to try anything in the background to create texture because that's what it's about this week is creating different textures with uh, kind of household products. You don't need to use the same as I did, but I tried to use at least a couple of things that most people will have. And here's my completed set. So my first row is with the cling film, the middle row is with the salt, and the final row is with the acetone. And you can see that despite the fact that I've put more than one layer, you know, I've layered it up on top, you can still see the effect underneath. More on some than on others, but I am really liking the way that these turned out. The cling film on the thicker paint, the fluid acrylic, turned out really well. And I really liked the way that they all turned out. Could still feel the salt on the third row down because, as I say, if I'd scraped away too much, all I was going to be left with was lots of little white pieces. So I hope you have fun in the Mixed Media Emporium group this week. I uh, really look forward to seeing what you create. When you post, let us know what, what you've used, especially if it's something different to uh, anything that Nina and I have used. So just about there. I do like the way the acetone played with it. As I say, not sure how well that will stand up. Uh, might check back in 50 years time or something to see if it's done any damage to it but we'll see so I hope this has given you some ideas and uh, as always I will just simply end by saying take care thanks so much for watching bye for now